Hey there. So I wanted to make a quick point of clarification about something we discussed in the pod today, and that is the gift codes from Get to 11. Now, when Eddie and I were discussing those in the pod, we weren't entirely clear on the shipping costs. And that's actually important because anything over $50 is entirely free for shipping. Anything below $50 is going to come out to about $20 in shipping. So these $20 gift codes are basically $20 off anything $50 or more because anything below $50 is going to be a wash. So that's the reason I took down the original video. And if you left comments on that video, I think it was up for about an hour and we got several good comments already. Don't worry, I've saved those comments. So the $100 gift code is still up for grabs and that's going to be awarded to the comment that we take out of the comment section, a question and answer in next week's podcast. So again, the people that left the original comments in the original video I posted, I still have those. Feel free if you did leave that comment to post it again in this video. All right, thanks so much and enjoy. All right, well, welcome again to the John Q Podcast, where, again, we talk about all things related to pickleball. And technology. Gear and technology. <laughs> yes. And technology. Tech forward, we are. Um, we have so much to talk about today. We do. It's nuts. We do. Uh, hi, Eddie. Hey. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been, been a while, on. yeah. Uh, gone, gone for a couple of weeks, or gone for a week, and then, yeah, last week we didn't put out a podcast episode, but you know what? I'm okay with that. We're, we're pretty steady. Not okay with that, John. You're not okay? Every week. I thought you were going to quit on me. I texted you a couple of times. You didn't reply. I'm you like, know, I reached Eddie's out to gone. a couple people. Got some feelers <laughs> out there. We'll see how it goes. You know, I, I heard somewhere a long time ago when I was thinking about starting a podcast that most people make it to seven podcast episodes and then stop. And our, this is week eight. So we've broken broken the mold. A complete success. And that's right. And All we forgot right. to mention last week that episode 007. You a Bond fan? Uh, hey, I watch him, yeah. I'm not, okay. a, not a huge fan, but uh, it's something noteworthy, I would say. So you know that character Q from the movies? Yes, from the Bond He's movies. He's kind of the tech guy, right? Yeah, that that's guy right. behind the scenes. That, that was kind of my dad in real life. Oh, yeah? Nice. Yeah. So. He, uh, his entire career, I never actually knew what he was doing mm-hmm. until he retired, and then he was able to tell us all that oh. he had been with the CIA all that time. And oh, I that's neat. Had really no cool. idea. So when did? How old were you when he retired? Uh, well, I was an adult, so probably in my maybe almost thirty. So it, at that time, it was pretty cool to you. Your dad was pretty cool. Oh yeah. Instead of like teenage years, where you'd have been like, who yeah. cares? <laughs> but I remember, like as a teenager, like he. Like at Thanksgiving, he'd like disappear for an hour. <laughs> like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. Now I know. Now you know. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Not all of us have, you know, undercover secret agent dads, but. It's in the jeans. In the jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask about your real job. That's right. So, yeah, what have you been doing? What's What's been going on in your life the past couple of weeks? You know, I'm, we've been talking about like health and wellness um, every week, and I'm all about that. I'm about to be 55 this year. Like so, I said, the first time I met you, you, you know, on court, you never know what, how oh, people are because they're thanks. sunglasses. But you told me at that time you were 53, and I was like, what? I thought you were in your 30s. Yeah, so but you're like— a lot younger looking. Stuff hurts all the time. Something different hurts. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm very concerned, you know, at this point in my life about just maintaining the health that I have. I'm, I'm in really good health, but I want to keep it that way. And so I've been thinking more about weight training and keeping my bone density and bone mass up to snuff. Uh, obviously, the the muscle side of things, mm-hmm. uh, and so I invested in some gym equipment for the house, squat rack and uh, lat pool, you know that whole combined machine. Mm-hmm. Is it a particular brand? Uh, it is. I don't remember what it okay. is. It came from a local shop here in Boulder. Gotcha. But um, yeah, I've been enjoying just. I I try to get to it every day. So I'm in the basement working most of the time. So. Mm-hmm. When I go upstairs for something, I stop at the machine and I do a couple sets. Yeah. So I try to work it into my normal routine. So that's why you bought the equipment because of convenience and being able to work out yeah. in little small portions here and there as right. you're working through the day. Because you have a lifetime membership and they have an amazing gym. That's true. Yeah. That's but, true. But sometimes, I mean, our gym gets pretty crowded. Yeah. 
and you have to you don't have to fight for machines, but sometimes you do have to wait for the machine that you want mm-hmm. or a squat rack or or whatever it may be. So it's just yeah. good to have it. So you're gonna get huge. Huger? <laughs> <laughs> Rip off your shirt on the pickleball court. Well, you're the court. Incredible Hulk. I mean, you're the, you're the archetype here. <laughs> well, that's awesome. You, What's that's up? awesome, though. That's, that, I'm, I'm all about, you know, staying healthy, especially as we get older. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm 35 years old, so I'm getting up there. <laughs> you look like crap. <laughs> I do look like crap. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, same. I'm, in my, I'm 52 now, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Staying not just strong, but supple, you know, working on those joints, making sure, you know, you're not going to damage your joints as we all do on the pickleball court, even young people. Yeah. Uh, is key. I'm but never yeah. going to be able to look at you without thinking, oh, there goes a supple gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think most people think that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, yeah, so my big, big event over the past week uh, was last week we went, uh, some of us content creators, went to New Orleans for the YOLA event. And uh, so the Chris and Will have already talked about it on mm-hmm. the Pickleball Studio, and Braden just released a, a new podcast today for Pickleball Effect, and he talked about it too. So there'll be a lot of overlap, but but uh, I think it's definitely worth noting. And again, all of us signed uh, NDA before we went, so we cannot speak anything about the paddle technology being released in the new paddles. I mean, nothing at all. We can't even show it. And they were they were pretty serious about it. They were joking in the presentation about it, but kind of joking, kind of not. Right. Like, like, go ahead and try to... Try to leak something about this paddle, and we'll slap yeah. a lawsuit Meet on our it for team millions of, of dollars. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and you know, there's just enough seriousness in it that, that all of it scared all of us into not not that we would leak anything, but but definitely being ca- overly cautious and not talking about the paddles. But it was a fantastic event. Um, I was really stoked to be uh, invited to it, and that was in no small part to. Um, Will and Chris, you know, they they put on a good word for me. Uh, Yola invited me. I think Braden did also. So thank you, uh, you know, Avengers team. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so we, we sh- I showed up and uh, we went out to eat dinner the first night, had a nice dinner, and then we came back. And this is how lame all of us are. We all sat around and worked that evening while everybody else at the event, showing up early at the event, went out, you know, hit the French Quarter and, and did all of the things you do in New Orleans. I'd never been to New Orleans, and, and I love the history. I love doing things. But I was so busy that I sat there at the, at the hotel typing on my computer together with Chris. Will wasn't there yet. Uh, Brian uh, from Building Pickleball was there, and he was also working. And Braden fell asleep. I think that, yeah, it was the first night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's got young kids at home, a three-year-old at home, and uh, he went in. He's like, I think I'm just going to take a nap at 5 p.m. And he stumbled out That's last into the lobby him. at 9 p.m. or something. It was like, oh, that was a mistake. And then, yeah, the next day we, we were up. Um, I think, oh, yeah, the next day was a noon meeting, and we had kind of this conference where they presented the paddles. Uh, most of the you know, the big-name Yola pros were there, so we had Ben and Colin. Tyson and Anna Bright, and uh, each of them kind of introduced their paddles or went, they had had them on these pedestals and they went over and mm. uh, gave us the, so yeah, they gave us kind of the lowdown on the paddles and there was some Q&A and, you know, I think I was recording that. Um, Isaac, Chris's brother, was definitely recording it as kind of a potential um, vlog. So that might get, get released, maybe not, we'll see. After the paddles were released. And, yeah, and then we went and did some open play uh, with the pros. Uh, I got to interview everybody. Oh, Simone Jardim was also there. And I got to interview all the pros except Simone. And, uh, you know, I kind of brainstormed on the plane on my flight over if I got to – I didn't know if I'd get to interview them. Mm -hmm. If I got to interview them, what I might ask them. And it was a lot of fun. I, you know, kind of would present a serious question, you know, kind of about paddle technology and then kind of a fun question and then a serious question and a fun question. And um, the, all of the pros were, were super nice. You know, they were, they were there to kind of be a part of this and that was kind of their job. But you could tell they were enjoying it too. And you know who, you know who of those pros 
I could totally be like best friends with. I never would have figured. I'm gonna go with Colin Johns. Colin Johns. Yeah, you see him. You see him play, and he's you know he seems kind of grumpy. See, you know he's, he he doesn't really play to the crowd much at all. He's just kind of inward facing, which doesn't. He's very insightful thing. though, if you've ever heard him. Oh yeah, in interviews. Yeah, but. I sat down and I gave him, I was like, yeah, I'm John, I do this, you know, I do these really geeky paddle reviews. He's like, oh, yes, I'm, I'm going to love this. And we'd sat there and talked and we had 15-minute slots and he was one of the two people after, after we finished, he just hung around and like we just chatted, mm. you know, he was just like super nice guy. So really impressed with Colin. Ben, super nice too, really laid back. <laughs> he's just, you know, you can tell like in between tournaments, he's just, he's in a place of zen, you know, so it's, it, it's not kind of comes off as closed off sometimes, but a lot of fun. I got some good questions in to Ben. Anna Bright's the other person that kind of hung out after after the interview just to talk, just to chat. She's a really nice person. And uh, Tyson's Tyson, you know. Yeah. He's, he's, he's fun to talk to, uh, energetic. And, so all, all your questions go over well, or did some of them hang out there like a brick? <laughs> One of them hung out there like a brick. Uh, yeah, I was going to cut it out, but because I didn't want to embarrass Anna Bright. But she, I, one of my one-off questions, kind of fun questions, was: so if you if you go to a live concert, who do you end up paying most attention to? The guitarist, the bassist, or the drummer? And she just sat there blank for <laughs> seemed like a long time, and she's like. Honestly, I don't know the difference between the guitarist and the bassist. <laughs> She's like, the last, the last concert I saw was Taylor Swift. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Taylor has a band behind her, you know, but yeah. you do go to see Taylor Swift, but she was laughing about it. She's like, I just kind of blanked there. I don't know. I thought you'd be asking about when she's going to uh, ditch James for uh, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a juicy question. <laughs> yeah, I had not seen, I had not seen that. I heard that they won, but I had not seen a game oh that, my God. that day. It was, the, she, the whole weekend was just incredible mm -hmm. for her and Andre. Yeah, I mean they both double gold uh, performances in the in the PPA tournament in Austin. Just amazing play. That was so fun to watch. Well, let's talk about that in a second. Okay, yeah. sounds good. But no, it sounds like a great event. It was a great event, and you know, a, a funny, so many great things happened on that. But a really funny memory I have of this is that that first day when we went from the kind of the the presentation event where they're presenting the paddle mm -hmm. to uh, we took a bus across town to play indoors at this pickleball facility and on the bus it's all of us getting on so i sat down next to chris and will near the back of the bus and you know here's colin coming on there's tyson there's anna bright and there's all the yola employees and, and there's people from pickleball central and you know it's in this us paddle reviewers in the back and chris mentions to me he's like Hey John, did you bring um, did you bring your graffiti? I'd love to test the swing weights, and I was like, no, I totally didn't even think about that. But that would be really cool to test swing weights of these newer paddles. And we're like, oh. And then Braden steps on the bus, and he's cradling a graffiti like a baby, <laughs> <laughs> walking walking down the bus. And we're all like, you got the graffiti. And Braden had this great idea, and, and he interviewed each of the pros, and that was his interview. He sat down with the graffiti, and and oh, brought nice. brought out the stock paddle. You know the stock alpha paddles, and said, "Okay, here's here's my tungsten tape. You know, weight this up to your specifications, and then we'll test the pre and post swing weight." And he talked about that on his podcast today, so I'm not going to spoil it. But but none of the pros knew what the swing weight was. They just go by static weight and feel and feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but yeah, they they ranged. You know, I asked Colin. I, I was like, "Colin, what was your swing weight?" And he was like, oh, "I didn't know it, but uh, it's 118." I was like, "That's my swing weight too." So, it it goes from like, uh, what? Oh, that? <laughs> you haven't seen that? <laughs> Thank you. All right, I will leave you guys. And I will. Stop. <laughs> I will not interrupt you. Oh my goodness! I gotta bring her on camera one day. Uh, yes, I should. I mean, you need to, to see be, Mrs. To be Q. Fair, yes, Mrs. Q. <laughs> to be fair, she's she's much more entertaining than I am. Uh, Both of us together, probably. She she's <laughs> she's got the charisma. <laughs> where where were you? <laughs> I think I was talking about uh, uh, Braden. Braden. And oh yeah. Graffiti. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah the, I think the, you were. The pros didn't really know what their swing weights were, but yeah, they kind of clustered. I'm surprised Ben wouldn't know. I was surprised too, or Colin, yeah, for that yeah. matter. But Colin is at 118. I think Ben was higher, and Anna was was the lowest. I think it. I forget. So does I'll Colin let, play with only the Colin Johns model and Anna Bright the Anna Bright model? 
And that's not a question I asked them, but uh, they they were playing with those models okay. when, when we were playing with them. And she seemed to be uh, using that particular paddle in the tournament. She did, yeah. And I think she's she's playing better with it, I would say, for sure. Can't argue with two golds, I guess. And we got to play with the pros. The only pro I got to play with, I got a game in with, I was so busy interviewing and doing other stuff, was, was Ben. So mm. uh, I played a doubles game with Ben. He was playing with Will as his partner. He was playing left-handed. And still put the hurt on, put put the hurt on us. He's like at least a five zero left hand. I was gonna say, I, I think he has said that in the past actually that yeah. he would consider himself a five zero. And let me hand. tell you, those balls come off hot. His, his left hand is is loose and lively. <laughs> let me just say that he was driving those things, and it was just like with, with that new paddle. Oh my god, and it was a lot going on there. I don't want to get slapped with a lawsuit talking about the the new paddle. So. He hit with the paddle, a paddle, a no paddle, yeah, right. with his left hand, right. and it was a rocket. Maybe he should have also like worn an eye patch or something. <laughs> <laughs> another left yeah, another handicap. Not, uh, yeah, it's not <laughs> – lefty is just not enough of a disability. <laughs> or a banana suit. I like your idea. <laughs> a banana suit. That works. Uh-huh. Cool. Seems like these kind of events are becoming more frequent. Yeah. Uh, and I was not at one last year. Oh, Will and Chris and Braden were, and they said this one was, was much improved and more organized. So bigger and better things each year. Can't wait to see the new paddles. Uh, there we go. All right, so gear gossip. Yeah. News. Again, all of us have been talking about this, paddle reviewers. There are so many paddles coming out in April. April's going to be nuts. April, May, just so many. A lot. And some significant Paddles, you know, big big brands first of all. So obviously the Yola, mm-hmm. uh, Alpha, and also Engage is coming out with a new one. Uh, they're they're making a new power paddle, which they said all their pros immediately switched to. And I don't know the details in terms of what the technology is, but they are sending me some, and I'll be able to review that. Um, who else is coming out with a new one? Uh, Carbon. Carbon's coming out with the Carbon Concept, which I'm sure most of you have heard Will talk about. And I did get a chance to hit with that. Will brought his, and mm. I hit with that at the YOLO event for a game, and it plays really well. I won't, I won't spoil it again, but, uh, but it's a very powerful paddle. Uh, I won't, that's, I'll leave it at that. Thrive, obviously, is, is uh, releasing their Azul in April, and I'll talk about their pre-release in a second. Rhombus also has a new paddle coming out, the FX version of the Pulsar, and they are not only releasing it in the R1 and R3 shapes, which they've released in both the Pulsar and the Nova, but also they're bringing back the R2. Not only are they bringing it back, they've revised the shape of the R2. I don't have it here, but the R2 is, instead of being kind of a circular, shorter paddle, like Mm -hmm. the original Mm -hmm. R2s, now it's a wide body, so it's a square um, just over eight inches wide, I think. I haven't measured it, but it looks a lot like the Scorpius shape, you know, somewhere in between the Scorpius, let's say, and the Willair Mach 2 Forza. And yeah, I, I hit with, with that one and the others briefly. Um, they, they do have a heavier swing weight. They do have a new te- technology. I won't mention what until the release, but, but um, yeah, there's something going on in the core with that one as well. And yeah, with the heavier swing weights, you know, th- they feel different than any of the previous Yola, uh, Yola, any of the previous Rhombus paddles. Um, I mentioned they're called the FX series. I no. think I did. Yep. Okay. So the FX series of the Pulsar. And um, one big improvement that I think I can talk about is, is they have a new peel ply. So instead of using that really fine legacy style grit on the raw textured surface, it's now a coarser peel ply. And it's a new one. I mean, it looks under the microscope a lot like the new one from 6.0, it's not that exact replica, but it gets really good spin. If you remember the last Nova release, the spin wasn't that great on those paddles. Around 17, 1600 is what most of us paddle reviewers were getting, 17, 1600 RPM. This one's well over 2000. I think I was getting between 2100 and close to 2300 on, on these paddles. So big improvement on spin, and I don't, I haven't hit with them enough to give a better initial impression, but that's coming out too. Uh, Pickleball Apes is also releasing a a budget line of paddles, and I don't know much about them, but they will be raw textured surface, 
I think they, you know, their thing is kind of that Kevlar blend. So I think they're also going to be uh, a Kevlar hybrid Kevlar carbon fiber cloth. And that's coming out toward the end of April. And I know I'm forgetting. Bread one. and butter? Bread and butter. That's right. Is it the Shogun? Shogun. That's, that's is that correct. It? Yeah, that's okay. correct. And yeah, it has a a carbon fiber titanium uh, surface. Weave, yeah. Weave. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know anything about it other than what Doug told me that, you know, this is coming out. I, I haven't received a test model, but they're the first to the market with this and you know, who knows? Maybe it'll be something new and or at least an alternative similar to what Kevlar is, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but in usual fashion, br- bread and butter, Doug, is doing a lot with the graphics and the design. It looks great. It's hilarious. There's some Japanese writing that originally said Ben Johns is a nerd. <laughs> and they, they dialed that back Oops. to – yeah, they dialed that back to – uh, something else, uh, yeah. Tennis sucks is you know one of one of their one of their That's phrases. That's hilarious. I love. I'd buy it just for that. <laughs> and six yeah. zero, six zero. Uh, are they releasing something new? The Willinator. Oh, is that coming out in April? I don't know what the date is on that. Okay, but I know it's in the works. Yeah, Willinator's in the works. That might be a little later than April. Okay. There's so many good paddles coming out. But that's I don't know seven manufacturers right there, multiple paddles. So yeah. And you know, Christmas maybe, in May. Maybe not all of them will be amazing, but I'm sure at least one or two will be. So I'm I'm excited. Too soon to call it Gen Three. Uh, well, we we all talked about it. The Avengers had a meeting, okay, <laughs> <laughs> and we did decide. Uh, and this, you know, to be clear, this is this is Chris's terminology. He, he, I'm pretty sure Chris Olson coined Gen Two. You know, for the thermoformed varieties of raw carbon fiber, and Gen One being the cold layered sandwich paddles that, mm-hmm. that that you know all of the carbon fiber paddles before thermoforming had and yeah and gen 3 is basically it's what gearbox released with their pro series and we just haven't called it yet, that yet so the use of foam in the core of the paddle to enhance it so sort of a floating core concept not foam ed, not just edge foam you know that 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 the gen 2 paddles already had and even you know, Gen 1.5 paddles had the edge foam starting with the yellow Hyperion. But now using, like, foam, not just, like, a seam of it, but, you know, a band. two or three inches around gotcha. the perimeter, maybe not the entire perimeter. You know, in the case of the Gearbox Pro Power, it, it is kind of like a trampoline where you have foam around the edges and you have these carbon fiber ridges, mm-hmm. ribs, with filled with foam. And the whole thing, you know, there's, there's foam infused in the, in the core. So... Something along those lines. We haven't really put it in the book of Q yet in terms of exactly what constitutes a Gen Three, but but yeah, it, it was pioneered by by the Gearbox Pro Power. But the Gearbox is uh, you know these carbon fiber tubes that are sort of wound up mm-hmm. to create this rib structure. Mm-hmm. That's not necessarily the definition of Gen Three that that no. we know of. No, definitely not. I mean, their 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 technology is patented, the SST core and. They're, as far as I know, the only ones using it. I don't think the technology is leaked into these factories in China mm-hmm. where other people are going to start producing it. But we will see some more innovation this year. I've talked to a couple of pedal companies. They're not copying Gearbox, but they are working on cores in different ways. So I'm kind of excited to see where this goes. There just doesn't seem to be a ceiling to this technology. It, it doesn't. And, you know, it's it clearly... It's not just a technological difference. It's a performance difference, too. That, I mean, the, the Gearbox Pro Power paddles just play different than anything else. There's nothing else like them right now. Yeah. True. Okay. What else, Eddie? Oh, well, you want to talk about the Thrive? Yeah, we can jump to the Thrive if you want. So Thrive started a pre-release day before yesterday for their Azul. So you can, you can purchase them now, and they'll ship second week of April. And the... New design on it is pretty fantastic. So here's one of the newer paddles. This is a production model. The ones we were playing with in Las Vegas when we w- went to that event uh, were pre-production, and they had you know black edge guard, black handles. This edge guard, I don't know if it's going to pick up too well on the camera, but it's a really they call it midnight blue. The edge guard, and it's it matches the. The blue and the weave, the Kevlar blue and the weave on the surface. So really pretty. And then the white handle. So it's one of the, I'd say one of the better looking paddles on the market right now. 
And then, yeah, the cool thing about Thrive, which we've already talked about, is is you can order within a swing weight range. So they give you, you know, like one. If you go on their website, Thrive.com, hit hit up the Azul uh, pre-order page, and you can see that they come in swing weights from 115 to 119. And you get this card for each of the paddles after you purchase it, and it gives you a swing weight, the twist weight, uh, the balance point, um, Spin. Head heavy, so it's a rating from one to ten, I think, on head heavy, and then the static weight. So, really cool. Nobody else is doing this right now. I think it's. I think there's an appetite for it in the pickleball community, and yeah, it's a sharp looking paddle, plays well. I do want to get out a review. I don't know if if I'm going to wait until the official release of the paddle, or I might do like a first look, sort of a video initial impression before then. But yeah, you. Everybody, I've talked about my thoughts on this paddle before. It plays really well. It, it does. is definitely a power-oriented Kevlar-faced paddle. So, again, it's not Kevlar on the core. It's paddle. It's Kevlar and carbon fiber twill weave on the surface, and I love that combination. I, you know, starting with the Apes, I've, I've been a big fan of the Kevlar on the surface. It does not play like the other Kevlar surfaced paddles. It doesn't play like the mm, Ruby. It doesn't play does like not. the Apes. Uh, any other it's very it's very dense and it's it very is. powerful and it's a, I would say definitely in the power category pa- power paddle category uh, the demo that I had the pre-production one was was a little more muted I'd say than the production models I was hitting with this when you and I were playing a couple of days ago and it was it, it was coming off hot so I've got to play with it a little more to, to get it dialed in but um, definitely a power paddle with Capabilities to, to you know, dial in the control as well. It's not all power. So there was a, a comment in the video from last week about the Azul. Someone had asked, you know, what's the spin compared to other kind of spin friendly paddles? You have numbers on that, John? Yeah, I did get it. I haven't done it on the production model, mm-hmm. but to me, it feels exactly the same in terms of spin as the pre pre production and the the average I got for. Spin on the pre-production Azul was 2155 RPM. So that's, you know, top tier and, you know, kind of in the upper range of that top tier. So really good spin on all of these Thrive paddles. But, yeah, so the Azul is no exception there. What's the date on that one? Is it April? Yeah, so the Azul is shipping on April 18th. Okay. They're but 200, you can pre-order today. You can pre-order today. They're $200. You can take 20 bucks off that with the code John Q. Perfect. Uh, oh, in terms of the swing weights, I would say that for most people, so again, they, they go from 115, the lightweight from one to 119, the heavyweight, I would stay somewhere in that 116 to 117 range for, for most people, I'd say. That's probably going to be the most popular of those paddles. And that that start that stock weight is going to feel good for most people, and it's still light enough in terms of swing weight that you can... You can manipulate it with yeah. perimeter tape. The pre-production model that you had that um, was kind of set up and customized for you, mm-hmm. what was the stock swing weight of that one? Because you ended up adding uh, six grams on each side, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. Yeah. And I don't know the, the stock swing weight on that, but it ended, ended up being um, 118 swing weight with the six grams on each That's side. That's not bad at all. Yeah, not bad at all. And, you know, it's placed low on the paddle face. At four and eight again, and then a little lower as yep. well on the neck, because that's that's minimizing the the swing weight increase. I would imagine, if I had to guess, it was in the yeah the one sixteen range to start with, adding a couple of points to the swing weight with the with the lead. Nice, yeah. And so you briefly mentioned Dayaskew and Anna Bright double gold. Did you want to talk any more about that? Well, I yeah I was. Paying particularly close attention to Anna Bray because I know she's the a Yola pro, uh-huh. and I wanted to see if I could spot what paddle she was using. Uh-huh. Uh, I ended up screenshotting it, and it does look like she's playing with the Alpha. Mm-hmm. I I could immediately tell just because of the noise the paddle makes. It's it's uh, similar to the Gearbox, that mm-hmm. sort of deep throated mm-hmm. um, pitch that you you might be familiar with yep. versus sort of that high pitch you hear from other paddles. So right. uh, it's very distinctive. She was. Beating the crap out of the ball. Really powerful strokes. Mm-hmm. Um, two golds, new paddle. 
I don't know. New partner, too. <laughs> New partner. <laughs> New partner. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Sorry, James. But, yeah, Dayescu is just playing out of his mind these days. What an incredible player. But, yeah, I, I could tell, too, the sound of that paddle is definitely an alpha. And every Yellow Pro right now is playing with, with what appears to be an alpha paddle, but there's some rumors out there. If you listen to, to Ben and Colin's paddles, even though they say alpha on them, mm-hmm. I'm talking only. I'm not talking about the event. I'm talking about what right. you can see on TV at, yep. at the pro event, at the, the competitions, PPA competitions. They don't sound like Anna Bright's paddle. They don't have that deeper thud, similar to the gearbox, but they sound just like the original Perseus and the original Scorpius. Okay. So, so there's some rumors going around that, for them. that John's brothers are just playing with their original paddles, not the new ones, and it just has that alpha stamp on them. Whereas Anna Bright and other pros are playing with the new alphas. So I don't know if that means that the Johns brothers are not going to shift to the alphas or um, they're just taking a while to do it or if it's just a rumor and it's not even true. And I ask you with a, a, another fairly new paddle, the Proton. Yeah. Uh, playing really well. So so solid lately. Yeah. And same with Megan. She made it She made it to the finals too, didn't she? In the last, uh, last event. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, Megan and, and Andre both playing with the Proton Series 1. And it has, again, I did the review on it a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago. And uh, good paddles, very different paddles. Again, the smooth surface, so it's tacky to the touch, not gritty, but it generates spin with friction instead of grit. And, uh, yeah, and I gave it a good review for sure. That there's it's, The paddles aren't for everyone. They're, they're kind of heavy, mm-hmm. you know, top heavy, but most most – Pros play with heavy paddles, you know. I do like the spin. And the spin was incredible. It was at 2,300, which yeah. is top, top tier. Yeah. Uh, and as far as I can tell, the spin is more durable than than other textures, all other textures. You know, it's 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 smooth and tacky, and it's kind of – it feels kind of rubberized. It does, it, it, yeah. It, it passes the deflection tests and the hardness tests and everything. But but it's a really thin layer, so it's, it's still hard, but you can it kind of grips your fingers. And I don't see that – it doesn't spin the ball in the same way, and it's not. It doesn't have the kind of the thin ridges of epoxy that peel ply does or raw carbon fiber does. So those break pretty much immediately, and then they progressively lose their spin, as we talked about on the pod before. Whereas those, I can see going until you actually wear through that layer. I forget what they call it, nanotech. Nanotech, yeah, right. the nanotech layer, and that could take months or over a year, you know, I think Andre is very, very vocal that he's been using the same couple of paddles for months, months, four months or so. Same yeah. with Megan. She said the same when I interviewed her. She has one paddle. <laughs> Maybe she has two now, but she she played that's, for three months with that one paddle and didn't even have that backup. So you know, spin degradation, it, it's, it's a huge thing. And yeah. if you don't have to worry about that, that's... That's great. That's huge. So let's get to kind of uh, what the, one of the big stories of this particular podcast and and a new company out there, a new retail company called Get to Eleven is sponsoring this episode of the podcast. We're not getting any money from this, but they're giving away twenty thousand dollars in gift cards to the first thousand people oh my goodness. <laughs> who use the code on their website. So to go to their website, it, it is get to eleven. So it's G E T then the number two and spell out eleven. Dot com And this is a gentleman, uh, Tony Rehan is his name, and uh, he reached out to me a few months ago and was like, hey, you know, I come from the golf industry. I love pickleball. Can you help me in terms of making the right decisions for which paddles to purchase for a retail shop? So he has brick and mortar and online shops. And he's doing this in his retirement. He was, he was successful in golf. And, and, you know, the more I talked to him, the, the more I liked him. Uh, and I just like the idea of pickleball is still young enough where people like that can come in and, and, and start from scratch and still be competitive with the pickleball centrals and galaxies and, and all these other big players in the pickleball scene. And, um, yeah, and I got to know him. He's a good guy, and, and I'm happy to kind of, you know, like I said, we're not getting any, any money from this, there's, so there's no money grab from us. But I think it's a win-win so if for for listeners of the podcast. You can go use a code. Um, the code, by the way, is John Q twenty K. So J O H N K E W. The number twenty twenty K and then K thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars and twenty dollar increments. And big caveat here: uh, 
Yola and Selkirk do not allow these cards to be used on their paddles. So $20 with the exception of Selkirk and Yola. Okay. So okay. just so Tony doesn't get in trouble there, to just offer $20,000 to our listeners is, um, you know, quite a big thing. And obviously he benefits from it from getting traffic. But yeah, I mean, it could be. And these about- are niche products. I mean, these are brand name paddles, brand mm-hmm. name accessories, brand name balls, the, the ones that we hear about all the time. Yeah, so I advised him on which paddles to to stock up on. So if you look at his website, all the paddles are the ones that are the best right now. And it's not just paddles. It's also clothing, shoes, accessories. So like you said, you can go buy a packet of balls or if you can go get erasers, paddle erasers, you can go put this money towards shoes, towards clothing. You know, um, so it's a pretty big deal. In addition, so anybody... Using that code, John Q twenty K, can go to the website right now and make a purchase, and it'll go until that twenty thousand dollars is used up. Thousand people, thousand people, well, almost a thousand people, because there will be a. We're offering a one hundred dollar gift card today to anybody who can. Who so, if you write a question in the comments section of this podcast, like we ask for, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, gotcha. if you're listening. Go to YouTube. If you're listening, go to the, my YouTube channel, John Q, uh, John Q Pickleball, uh, and leave a comment. And we, we ask this every week, so we try to solicit questions for mm-hmm. the following week. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to some music questions in a minute, but we're, we're wanting people to leave questions for next week. And the person we choose to read their question next week will get a $100 gift certificate to get to 11.com. So, cool. Very thank you. nice. Thank you, Tony. Very for, Yeah, thank you, Tony, for that. And I hope that everybody's well, John, happy with this. I think you have stuff. a thousand loyal listeners out there. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, maybe more. Maybe it'll, it'll spread beyond our listeners. But but uh, good, good on Tony. The website I was on it yesterday. It looks great. You know, it, it functions well. You can you can filter by paddle brand, by price, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I'm looking here. Paddles, balls, shoes, accessories, apparel. Uh, and then other miscellaneous things. So it's quite diverse. Indeed. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Good stuff. There's an Easter present for everybody. <laughs> big, big old Easter egg. Right on. Moving on. So this is our first week. So this was your idea, Eddie. I'm giving you all the credit oh, here. God. This is a really good idea. So actually, why don't you explain it? It's March Madness time. NCAA tournament is upon us. I love college basketball. I grew up watching the University of Maryland Terrapins. Uh, get their butts kicked every year for the most part. But still, college basketball is exciting. Let's do a paddle battle bracket to determine. It might take us a few weeks to determine what's the best paddle out there. Who's number one in the land as far as our subjective ratings go? Mm-hmm. So I think that we ought to do uh, a championship bracket. Mm-hmm. Do um, you want to talk a little bit more about our methodology? Yeah. So uh, Eddie and I sat down a couple of days ago. We played with four of the paddles we're going to consider for this bracket. And what we're going to do is have kind of a seeding originally. And then we'll go into quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals for the paddle with a single elimination at that stage. But in our seeding, we're basically judging the paddles. So we, we each play with a paddle for a game, and we switch, and then we'll go through four, maybe six paddles per, okay. per session. And we rate the paddles based on different things. So five points each for spin, power, pop, sweet spot, control, and then you had a great idea, just an X factor. A couple of bonus points just for something really special about a particular panel. I- exactly. Right? So, yeah, so again, five points each, and then you total that for the paddle. Important note here, I do very objective measurements of power and pop <laughs> right? on my paddle database. This is not that. This is us playing with new paddles that I may have already tested in those regards, and they, they some of them definitely are in my paddle database. This is just me and you spitballing it on the court in terms of this paddle feels like it has great yeah. spin. It feels like it has a great spin. We're just spot. having fun. Totally yeah. subjective. Exactly. Um, you know, it's not th- the data-driven science that we might normally do in a, in a deep dive in one paddle. Right. But we want to just see what we feel about these things. So we're going to spend a couple of weeks um, going through different paddles. 
Uh, and then at the end of our sort of preliminary activity, we're going to pick the top eight by score, our elite eight paddles. And at that point, we'll do that single elimination to see who uh, makes it to the quarters, the semis, and then finally our championship round. So, yeah, not all paddles will make it through the seating. It'll be us using our point system, subjective point system, right. to determine which are going into the quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, and again, yeah, five points each for all these, all these metrics. So I'm thinking one thing in particular that we might do, in addition to sort of our subjective scoring, is we actually play each other with these paddles. Mm -hmm. You play with paddle A, I play with paddle B, and then we switch. And then mm -hmm. we look at the point totals for each of those paddles, and that gets factored into the equation as well. Right. Um, so there is some, the, some data to look at. There's lots of variables. Again, we're just having fun, but yeah. uh, I think this could be a fun exercise. Yeah, it'll be fun. And also, you know, we're, we're, we're just selecting paddles that we know are kind of popular right now, that we like, and we both have different tastes. So, you know, one of us might love a power paddle and the other love a control paddle. So your ratings on a power paddle might be higher than mine and my ratings on a control paddle. So again, very subjective, yep. but the goal of this is going to have fun. And also, you know, we'll learn some things about these paddles as we go. And this week we had – we tested four paddles. So we had the shapeshifter, the chorus mm -hmm. shapeshifter, which we've both been enjoying, uh, going up against the 11624. Is that the <laughs> – 11624 Yep. X. And um, those two we kind of went head-to-head. -head, and then we had a couple of power paddles in there. Uh, so the Engage – Pursuit Pro mm -hmm. and the Sword and Shield, Shield J2H. Uh, I really wanted to try the Sword and Shield. There's another one that has a hybrid shape, which is also um, leans toward power, but it, ha it also has the fiberglass in the center. So it, a layer of carbon fiber, a layer of fiberglass, and a layer of carbon fiber, similar to the Hirachi. They didn't. They, they sent me most of their paddles. That one's missing. So we went to the J2H, which is the elongated power paddle with a hole in it. Okay, let's jump into it. John. Let's go. Okay, let's go. number one, the shapeshifter. We're doing power, pop, spin, control, sweet spot, and then our X factor. Where are you on power for the shapeshifter? Power, I put it four out of five. Four out of five. I would agree with that. That's what you had to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a decent power. It's not the most powerful paddle on the market. I can feel that. The effect of that fiberglass layer underneath the carbon fiber. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, similar to the Hirachi X, the um, the ship shape shifter has uh, its layup is three layers of unidirectional mm -hmm. prepreg. Top layer is carbon fiber. Middle layer layer is fiberglass. Bottom layer is carbon fiber. So the the Fiberglass provides a little bit more power and pop yep. than just straight up carbon fiber. Yep. So we started with power, and I think that fiberglass layer contributes to pop as well. I gave the shapeshifter a four here as well. I gave it a three for pop. I noticed it's a little more muted, which I actually enjoy. Uh, I would rate the ruby also at the same level of pop three. So that helps you helps me with my control. For spin, that uh, 18K... Surface, I think, gives it quite good spin. I don't know what the numbers are, but I, I gave it a four there. I gave it a five. It has exceptional nice. spin in, in my book. Uh, I think it's I, – I can't recall off the top of my head. I did measure it. I think it's around 2,200, if I recall. Do we have – do you have it with you? I do not have it with That's me. That's all right. We, we've shown it before. But it, yep. it's a sharp-looking paddle. It's shaped like – it's a hybrid shape with a rounded top, very similar to the 6-0 double point. black diamond. And it has that checkerboard-looking 18K uh, woven carbon fiber. Yep. Where are you on control, John? Control. I love the control on this thing. It's, it's a, a four for me for control. Four here, too. Okay. Yep, solid. Yeah. And I was – you know, I've talked about this before, but – my thirds feel really good with this paddle if, if I'm dropping it. Mm -hmm. Driving it too, but but the drops more so than most other paddles kind of go where I want them to. I'm not I'm not having a hard time dialing that in, popping it up too much, or hitting the the net and hitting it into the net. So. Yeah, part of that's the sweet spot as well, sweet to which spot. I gave a, a four. So I gave I'm it. four straight down the line. Okay, I I gave the sweet spot a five. Very I feel nice. like it has a very oversized sweet spot. Next okay. factor for you. 
um, our max here is five. I gave an extra two bonus points for X Factor. And th- there's just something about this paddle that gives me, it just feels very consistent. Mm-hmm. I never hit a shot and I, I think to myself, well, that didn't go anywhere close to what I was <laughs> had in my head. <laughs> right. This paddle, it's, it's almost telepathic in terms yeah. of what I intend to do and what it actually does. And for that, I'm giving it a couple bonus points. Totally agree. I actually gave it three X Factor points. Nice. For those reasons, I just, I trust it. I trust it to hit the ball where I want it to. And when it doesn't, I know that it's because I mishit it. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's nothing weird going on with yeah. the paddle. So I'm at 22 points for the shapeshifter. How about you? 24. Nice. We don't know if that'll make the Elite Eight in the end. We'll see. I mean, we might end up with two dozen paddles um, that we go through, but yeah. um, solid score right out of the box. Want to move on to the engage? Yeah, let's go. How are you on power? Power for the engage. So again, engage Pursuit Pro uh, got kind of rave reviews, you know, when it was released um, late last year, and just in terms of how much better it was than their previous yeah. release, which was kind of a flop. The interesting thing about it, and I have it here, is is that you know you can feel <laughs> the polymer in the handle, and so it's a Gen One paddle, but there's just something special going on in the core and in the layup of the layers. This is a raw carbon fiber paddle, but the layup of the carbon fiber underneath it, it's unclear to me if it, there's also fiberglass in there somewhere. It's a powerful paddle. That thing is juicy, man. It comes off hot. Yes. And yeah, so we played with the shorter handle, but there's also the MX, which is the elongated paddle, and uh, I like that one better. Uh, it, Same. It's, it's very much a subjective thing. Anyway, for power, I gave the Engage Pro a five. As did I. It's It's got to be top tier on power. Yeah. And when you were winding up that serve, I just decided to go in another direction, <laughs> take a water break or something, because it was that was a blast from the from the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your drives were, were crazy with it, which is insane because it's a it's a cold layered Gen One paddle, as far as I can tell. You know, you can There's feel the polymer in the handle. Something special with that core, though. But I can't imagine what would happen if you thermoform that sucker. Yeah. So. How about spin? What did you give it? Spin um, seemed really good. I gave it a four. Same. Yeah, I'd say it's over 2,000. It's got a pretty textured face, so Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the durability of that would be, but um, it seemed very good. Yeah. For pop, I needed more time with it. You and I played a game of skinny singles, and there was a lot of points ended from drives from the baseline. (laughs) (laughs) We really made it up to the kitchen. This is true. Uh, So I don't have a really good feel for pop, so I put it at a three, but I imagine it probably might move up to four if if I had more time with it. I gave it a four, Uh, and that was just from me trying to block your drives and returning your serves with very little swing, just sticking the paddle out there, and it seemed pretty poppy. I'm going to give it a four. Great. Sweet spot. What do you think? It was, it was tough for me to find the sweet spot sometimes on this, and that, that factors, factors into my sweet spot score but also my control score. Mm-hmm. I was uh, hitting shots to the left and to the right out of bounds mm-hmm. quite frequently, um, and I, I noticed at the top maybe 25%, top third of the paddle, there is no sweet spot. And so you know, leaning forward for those dinks, I was, I was missing quite a few of them. So for me, the, the sweet spot... Maybe I could adjust to it, but for the time that I had with it, it was not very predictable. Yeah. I had a really similar experience. I, I gave what, – what was your score in the sweet spot? I gave it a three on sweet spot. Same for me. And I had a very similar experience in terms of – the sweet spot's kind of low on this one. And again, we played with the short, shorter handles. The longer handle is going to be a little higher. But, I, you know, it's not where the target is. <laughs> I'd say it's just, you know, kind of down toward the bottom of the target. And hitting up, especially on the – when you hit off center towards the top edges, it feels really dead to me. It For wasn't me, just it, you see that inner ring there. Uh-huh. That's kind of where I started losing, you know, the that power aspect of what yeah. this paddle can deliver. Yeah, and anything out here, oh it, yeah, it's it's gone. Yeah, and I think that's probably because it's a Gen One doesn't have the edge foam to kind of broaden the sweet spot. But yeah, so sweet spot, not the greatest on this. Yep, um, no bonus points for me, so I wound up with an eighteen. How about control? Control, a two. I had, I had the same for control. I gave the X Factor a two just because it's curious to me how this thing is so powerful. And the power combined with the spin was pretty appealing. And, yeah, so I think, I think you know, if you dial in the sweet spot, get it 
get your hits a little lower on the paddle consistently, then this is obviously a good choice. A lot of the pros love this. Okay. Your total score? 19. 18 here. Pretty close. Horache. Horache. All right. this, this is this is yeah. You're in love with this paddle. You've been playing with it. It's been your primary for <laughs> this a few and weeks, the shapeshifter right? and the gearbox. I would say are my okay. my three in the bag at the moment. It's a shape I love. I love the long handle sort of crossover hybrid face. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see more of that. I, I think we will see more of that. But uh, it's just something about this paddle that tri layer face also is here, mm-hmm. uh, and I can feel it there too. Spin. All right, actually, we start with power. What, do you, what's your, what are your thoughts on power? You know, it's a, it's a kind of an elongated shape, that long handle, and I like to use all of that for mm-hmm. um, overheads, for serves. I'm going to give power here a four. Same for me. I, I noticed getting more leverage with the longer handle and the addition of a layer of fiberglass in the layup certainly adds to the power there. Uh, and you've got yours. I played with yours. You've got it leaded up. A uh, little bit. A little bit. Three grams three on each grams. side. Okay. Uh, but it's both at four and eight, and you also put it at... Top corners. Yeah. So two and... Just one gram at the top corners. Yeah. Two and 11. Two and 10. Yeah. yeah I felt like I had good, good power. I could certainly get the power I needed from it. And unlike the Engage, I feel like the sweet spot is very consistent, even, and, and fairly large. Like, uh, there's no dead spot at the top of the paddle, unlike what I noticed in the Engage. Yeah. For sure. Actually, I mistyped the sweet spot. I, I gave the sweet spot a four also. I did as well. Uh, I gave control a four. Control for me uh, is a three. I just felt like it wasn't at the level of the shapeshifter for me, which I gave it a four. So, you know, I th- it's definitely a more power-oriented paddle than the shapeshifter. And it's a little more poppy for me too. What did you give it for a pop? Pop, I'm at four. Four, four, four for me also. Yeah. So that extra pop to me is, is a little more hard, hard, a little more difficult to control, particularly at the kitchen. Well, the ball definitely doesn't sink into the face like it does for the shape shifter, and that's part of that whole control aspect. X factor for you? Um, I'm giving two extra bonus points here. Um, like the shape shifter, this is a, a very solid all around paddle. There's something about just the overall consistency of this paddle that I, I have really come to enjoy and, and rely upon. One thing I'm keeping an eye out for is um, spin degradation. This paddle feels really smooth to me, and I'd mm. like to see how um, you know other paddles uh, in this model range are faring over time because uh, the one that I've been using started off extremely gritty. I would mm. say top-tier spin, and I'm, I, I would like to test it now to see where it is, but mm-hmm. it feels a lot smoother just by touch. Yeah. It was, uh, we didn't mention the spin scores. That gave it a spin score of three. You could, it feels like a legacy in terms of the smoothness of it, and it didn't start that way. <laughs> so yeah. It wasn't intentional. I'd, I'd say I, I, I still was getting enough shape on the ball. I'd probably say it's maybe around 1,800 RPM yeah. is what my impression of it is right now, but it, it did start well above 2,000 I gave RPM. it a three as well. Okay. But we've been, I, I've been using a pre-production model, so I – I yeah. don't know what the production models look like. I would love to see how they're faring. All right. Overall score of 20. 21. 21 for you, yes. 20 for me. Okay. Man, All right. we are right in line. <laughs> we are right. It's like we planned this. <laughs> we actually didn't. Our right. last paddle this week? The Sword and Shield J1H, not the J2H. So I'm going to change my notes in here. So there are different power elongated ones. There's the J5 also, which is all fiberglass. The J1H has, I'm pretty sure the layup is, again, like the carbon fiber and fiberglass okay. layers. And um, as you can see, it has the, the hole in the paddle. So me or is surface. that hole even bigger than other holes that we've seen in the it's past? A, it's, a, it's very yeah. holy. It's, it's very holy paddle. <laughs> which is appropriate for it. <laughs> it is. So, yeah, I mean, um, it gets, so let's start with spin. Okay. Great spin for me. I, I can definitely shape the ball m- more with this than most paddles. I'd put it – it's definitely top tier. I've, I've spin tested it. You can check it out on my on my database. I think it's 2,200 plus. I gave it a five for a spin. I'm not there. I'm at a three with spin. But then again, I wasn't hitting the paddle particularly well. Mm. For me, there's something about the visuals of this paddle that I think are preventing me from – extracting top performance from it. To me, it looks very narrow. 
Mm, okay. It might not be. But yeah. Some, the, the combination of maybe the colors as well as the size of the hole uh, give the impression of a very narrow paddle. So it's kind of psyching you out in terms of the looks. <laughs> yeah. Thinking that you don't have much room for air. It, exactly. Width-wise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that didn't bother me too much. You know, um, the, the I think it's... 16.5 and 7.5, 16.5 long, 7.5. Maybe a little bit more elongated and a little bit more narrow, but not much. But, yeah, it, it does kind of have that appearance. Didn't didn't bother me too much. But um, were we talking about power or any um, particular score? You are talking about spin. Yeah, I was talking about spin, but power, this, uh, this is a power paddle. Mm-hmm. And I think it's extracting that power in part from the fiberglass, but it's really about swing weight on this paddle. Mm-hmm. It, it is a heavy-feeling paddle. It's a hammer. Yeah. And it's using that swing weight to basically plow into the ball, and that's what we're seeing here. Yeah. What'd you give it? I gave it a four. Yeah. Just I don't because... think there's necessarily anything particularly special about the core. It's just yeah. really the the weight distribution of this paddle. I gave it a five for power. Like you said, it's it's a combination of swing weight and materials, I'd say, and the design of the paddle in terms of being elongated with a longer handle. Yep. I had to change my technique to really extract power from this paddle. I, I tend to kind of whip through a ball no. and, and get very wristy. Yeah. With a heavy paddle like this, I've got to almost slow down a little bit. Yeah. Use a more flowing stroke and just kind of be patient. Just wait for the paddle to come through. It's you're, you're right. It's exactly the opposite technique that you would use with a gearbox pro power, for example, where you get that power from whipping through, you know, a shorter stroke and just whip it at the very uh, whip through the ball versus this one is like swinging a tennis racket, I'd yeah. say. So you, yeah. you use your shoulder smooth, and yeah. yeah. And, and that's what, not my game. I, I, I got to say, yeah. it's, you know, maybe I'm, I'm scoring this kind of harshly because it doesn't match my game, but uh-huh. I, I just got to go with yeah what I got on this one. Yeah. So, you know, I gave it a five for power because I, I, I know that with the full swing from the baseline, you can get really heavy uh, velocity on a ball. And, if you look in my database, it's near the top for, for power. Not as much as the, the gearbox is, but, but close. For pop, on the other hand, not much pop at all. I gave it a two for pop. I'm at a three. A three, okay. Yeah. So yeah. pretty close there. At, at the kitchen, first of all, it's, it is heavy. It's pretty sluggish. So you're not going to get you know, the ability to really... Yeah, even that one-inch punch, that Bruce Lee punch, you're not, you're <laughs> exactly. not getting that from this you're paddle. You're not getting that. And it just, it's a little bit softer feeling face. Which, you know, um, not a bad thing, but it's not great at pop. Sweet spot. Dose. Me too. Number two. Mm-hmm. So sweet spot's not great on this, and I don't think it's any – this hole is not helping a sweet spot because it's pulling up. Yeah. It, you know, you have less face to go from. So it's starting here and then, you know, kind of – and it's a narrower paddle. It's elongated. So when you combine elongated with the hole in the face, similar to the <laughs> Invicta Selkirk at Power Air, you get – a pretty narrow sweet spot. I'd say that this this is a little bit bigger than the than the power air, uh, but but not much. So I gave it a two for a sweet spot. Any bonus points? How uh, about control? What was your oh, control? Score? Control. Excuse me. A two. Same for me. Two for control. It's just even though it doesn't have much pop, usually that translates to more control for me. Uh, I just I couldn't dial in the sweet spot enough to make this control oriented for me. I'm with you. And I gave it a one for the X Factor. Based on what? Um, well, it's lower than the other X Factor scores. Uh, I do, I mean, I think Sword and Shield has some some cool things going on. I am looking forward to testing their their Kevlar paddle. I haven't gotten it yet. Uh, but, you know, it's a, it's in this paddle market, it's hard to look unique. And they do. They, do. they look very unique. These have a very distinctive yep. design. So that's yep. the X Factor to me. I gave it zero X Factor points for now. But keep in mind, we're going to reevaluate these. If if a paddle makes it to our Elite Eight, we're Mm going to take another look at these, do some rescoring, and go head-to-head with some paddles. So not necessarily the end of the line for the Sword and Shield, but uh, for now I'm at 14 points. 17 for me. So what was your top paddle? My top paddle today was the Shapeshifter at 22 and really tied with the Hirache at 21. Okay. Same for me. The Shapeshifter was... Well ahead of all the others for me. At 24 points, second place, Hirache, third, Engage Pro. So 24 for Shapeshifter, 20 for Hirache, 19 for Engage Pro, and then 17 for J1H. So we're in the same order. Okay. 
Nice. We don't know if these any of these paddles will make it to our Elite Eight, but right. uh, seems like we have some solid contenders here. Yeah. And you want to share what we're going to look at next week? Sure. It might take me a minute. Do you have it pulled up? I think we've got the Gamma Airbender next week. We'll take a look at the 6-0 Infinity. The, Two edges paddles. Yep. The Lux, the Selkirk Lux, the Pro Drive Encounter. And the Vatic Prism Flash. So those are our five for next week. We may add, subtract, change. Who knows? Okay. So we've got three edgeless paddles in there and two control paddles. That'll be fun. Yep. With a lot more to come. That's right. I like this, Eddie. Thanks for this idea. You bet. I'm looking forward to our Elite Eight uh, Championship Series. And this is going to go on for several weeks. I think we're calculating six weeks minimum yep. until we get a finalist. Well, we want to try and squeeze in some of these uh, new paddle releases coming out in April as well. So That's true. another reason to see what's coming down the line and see how they fare against uh, what we already know about. Very good point. Good stuff. Okay, so on to our... Rotating topic for the week, which this week I kind of wanted to to readdress our safety glasses and check in what we're thinking about our safety glasses. And John, we talked about glasses in episode one of this podcast. Everyone's talking about glasses now. So <laughs> it's just it's zeitgeist. It's, it's all... Everybody <laughs> is on the same mindset because all these power paddles are coming out. And this is something I talked with Ben Johns to in an interview just about safety glasses and a need for them. And he was saying that. My, my question was, you know, what what paddles on the market right now would you do you think we should cap power at in terms of exit velocity of the mm-hmm. ball? And he didn't give me an answer which paddle. Uh, you know, he's being very um, diplomatic, but he did say when you start wearing safety glasses, I think that's probably where you should cap it, and that's where we are now with the gearbox and the other paddles coming out, even currently out, I'd say that uh, safety glasses are needed. And he made the point, too, and, and brought it up, that particularly in the amateur ranks, because we don't have as much control and precision as the pros. So it's rare that the pros hit a 60-mile-per-hour speed up at somebody's face, whereas amateurs <laughs> spray balls quite a bit. So uh, that's important. You don't want to you don't want to damage your eyes. I'm going to go grab – I forgot to grab my Rhea – glasses, but I have them right over here. Go for it, mate. And it's 7.20, so we're at one hour. Okay. So, as I mentioned in episode one, <clears throat> I bought the Rhea, Rhea Eyewear safety glasses. Uh, these are the Reflex model. And I've been loving them. Uh, I, I, I love the design. They, they don't, I don't feel funny wearing them. For looks-wise, I think they're aesthetically pleasing, which... To me, is a big deal. That's one of the few things I do pay attention about, about style. Um, the lenses are great. <clears throat> you can There's no fog in the lenses, first of all. Mm-hmm. You have to have any fogging on the lenses, playing indoors, playing when it's really hot. Normally, my glasses fog up really bad. These haven't fogged up at all. One of the things that, that I've noticed is I'm almost at the point where I want to get a second pair of frames so I have a pair of outdoor glasses and a pair of indoor glasses because you can change out the lenses and this is about the best method I've come across for changing out lenses. You have a like a little tool here and the nose thing comes out and you put the tool in, twist it counterclockwise, you pull the lenses out and you replace them. Still, um, it, it's just kind of a pain. Like it takes a few minutes and then you, your hands are grimy, you got to yeah. clean off the glasses right. and that's one thing that bugs me to death is smudgy smudges on my glasses I, I'm constantly cleaning them so even though these frames are 200 bucks or frames plus lenses I'm thinking about making that purchase just so I do have a pair of indoor and the lenses I'm using these are the HD clear which I prefer for indoor you can also get um, a hybrid orange HD plus, which are these lenses. These are also for indoor, they're designed for indoor. I was able to use these in some indoor facilities with really good lighting and others like the, our Westminster lifetime where it's just kind of fluorescent overhead basketball court mm-hmm. dim. I can't use these. I don't see as well as the clear. So clear are my go-to for indoor. And then, uh, the, Court HD Plus are these lenses. You can see these are the look, the way you look through. They're brown and on, they're reflective on the outside. And these were designed 
to um, really make the colors on a pickleball court pop. And they, they, you know, they have the sun protection, uh, UV protection, and they look amazing to, as you're wearing them playing pickleball outside. I so. have heard that brown and rose are probably the two best for pickleball-specific contrast. Yeah, and I'm colorblind, so, you know, even for me, the colors pop better. I, I don't see green or, or red, uh, but using these lenses, the colors... Colors pop better. So, how's the feel? Are they comfortable? You know, I think they're comfortable, but uh, a lot of people do, and I notice too when you wear them, they do have a thick nose guard on them, and they come up uh, on the bridge of your nose when you're wearing them, and it's a little bit uncomfortable, and you can kind of see the the nose guard out of the periphery, periphery of your eyes, your peripheral vision. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a little bit annoying at first, but. I, I got used to it, no problem. And these glasses, I'd say, are the best of all the glasses I've used in terms of not screwing up my depth perception. You know, I've had some indoor, especially using uh, safety glasses indoors. I've had some real issues with with depth perception using various lenses, various frames. The, if the frames are too narrow, it screws up my my depth perception. Right. If the lenses don't have the right I don't know. A lot of lenses mess it up for and me, just too. looking at you from the side, it seems like they would be optically correct, even at the periphery. Okay. That's my observation, just okay. looking at you from this side. But have you noticed that looking through the glasses, that you know what seems to be um, accurate without glasses is holds true when you're wearing them? Yeah. And there's, there's still some adjustment. It's still, it still messes with your perception a little bit. But these are... These are the best I've used in terms of, of that. Do you play more confidently when you're wearing them? You know, not, I wouldn't say necessarily, but um, it's just something that I'm doing now. I just force myself to do it indoors as well. And outdoors is no problem. I, I prefer wearing them yeah. over not, but indoors is just one of those things that i am got to get used to doing. I don't have Rias. I wear Oakleys, but I've gotten so used to wearing them, I don't even notice them anymore. You're still loving your, your Oakleys? Absolutely. And which ones were yours again, the model? The Flak. Flak. Flak 2.0. Yeah. With prescription lenses, but they're clear and anti-glare, and they're, they're perfect. Did they ever fog up on you? Never. Okay. And they're comfortable mm-hmm. on your face? And, you know, probably the shape of the Rias might not be for everybody. You were saying that, you know, maybe they wouldn't fit your face as much as mine. Same for the Oakleys. So find ones that, that fit you well. Wear something, though. Yeah, but wear something. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, good. That's a that's a nice recap. Let's get into some questions. Yeah. So I got a, a email uh, from a viewer watching our YouTube channel uh, from Joel Burdett. And his question is, I just played some 4.5 gold medal tournament winners yesterday. And while I felt like I was keeping up with them skill-wise, my team won most of the games, I did feel like they had way more threatening paddles than me in terms of pop, power, and spin. Mm. Uh, they had a Carbon Power Series and a Gearbox Pro, to name a few. So Joe currently plays with a um, Sword and Shield J2, uh, so a like a hybrid-shaped control paddle. And he's looking for more spin, power, and pop, but with the same control as but with the same control as the J2. So, tall order. He wants, you know, best of both worlds. He can maintain the, pow- the control he has with the, with the hybrid paddle he's using, but he wants more offensive weapons. So, yeah, I think, I think lots to consider there and lots of options for him. What's the, what's the shape of the J2 again? Just like the 6-0 double black diamond. Okay. Well, there's certainly plenty to choose from. So, in terms of... Power and pop. Uh, I mean, one subtle move up from the J2 would be either the 60 double black diamond, which has more pop. I haven't hit much with the J2, but it does feel softer. So that would be something that you could easily adapt to. Next level up, I'd probably go to the Ruby. Mm-hmm. Ruby has significantly more power than the J2 and even more more power than the double black diamond. With a more muted feeling face, which is good for control for most people. So you're, you're maintaining that control. The sweet spot's big on the Ruby and all of these paddles. So that's a good option. Do you have any more to add yet? Whenever you think of Ruby, I think of Azul. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely the power is there. 
I think there's plenty of control with the Azul. I've never suffered from lack of control. I can't wait to get that into our tournament bracket to see where it scores. But um, I think that's a, a solid choice as well. And I would say that the Azul is a step up from the Ruby in terms yes. of power and pop. Agree. Especially pop. Ruby has more power than the double black diamond, uh, less pop. The Azul, power and pop yeah. for days, you know. It's and just, some of it is feel preference, right? Because right. they're, they're totally different feeling. Sure. Um, with the, the Thrive Azul being very sort of dense and solid feeling in a good way, in a very quality way. Yeah. Uh, with the Ruby less so. Not in the quality factor, but in the in terms of its feel. And even the core sa- shapeshifter, I think, would be a good option. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. There's, there's enough power in that. So I, t- ranking these in terms of power, I'd put the Azul at top. And when I say power, I mean power and pop. Mm-hmm. Azul at top. Ooh, what's more powerful between the Ruby and the shapeshifter? True. I'd say the Ruby has more power but less pop than a shapeshifter. So I'd put those two kind of in the same tier. It's pretty close, I would say. Yeah. It would be hard to distinguish. Yeah, for sure. And black diamond, double black diamond below that, and the J2 below that. Anything we want to insert in and that? The Vatic you could throw in there as well. Which one? The Vatic Prism Flash? Prism, yeah. Well, that one is pretty, I'd say, control-oriented. Probably more, less powerful than than even the paddle he has. But, but yeah, it's similar. Um how about the Hirache? Where would you put it in that lineup? Uh, definitely there's power there to be had. I think if you can um, sort of uh, pull out the elongated, mm-hmm. you know, the, the long handle and use that as a lever, there's, there's power there to be had. Yeah. Solid so, choice. So it depends. Uh, that, that's getting into the elongated power. Exactly. You've got to want a smaller face and a longer handle to, yeah. to move in that direction. Yeah, I think that's kind of a good lineup. Uh, I mean, these body helix paddles we we kind of talked about two weeks ago. Uh, there are some options in there. They have, again, um, well, the body helix X4 is a hybrid paddle, which has, you know, I'd say that the from what I remember, we didn't play too much with this. Spin is outrageous on this, <laughs> but the power and pop are are good. I'd yeah. say uh, probably more, it's an all court paddle. Maybe right in the middle, maybe a little more control oriented. But but more power than the J2, I'd say for sure. And by the way, he's mentioning spin too. He wants something very spinny. All of these have uh, exceptional spin as well as well as the J2. Maybe his is worn down. And the face is worn down. He needs to maybe get a new paddle to refresh that. Which brings me, which reminds me, we didn't talk about the the new paddles coming out uh, in April. There's uh, Pickle P K K L is coming out with a replaceable face paddle in april they're beating um reload uh reload's been working on it for years and i think they might be coming out in april too maybe may i'm not sure anyway as an aside so back to joel's question i think that we covered it yeah okay nice i have a question from mi hermana my sister nice (laughs) she's actually a, a coach mostly beginner intermediate coach but she lives out in chapel hill north carolina uh and she asked me a question about Solid budget paddles for around that $100 mark for her audience. I mean, keep in mind we're talking about beginners here mostly. Beginners, yeah. Um, She asked me to answer the question. I said, no, you have to watch the podcast. I love it. We're going to get one more viewer this week. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Yeah, well, that's a great question. And and if we were were answering this question a year ago, we'd have very limited choices. And now there are a whole bunch of paddles in the $100 price range that are really good paddles. And, it, you know, for beginners, you could do any number of Gen 1 rock carbon fiber paddles in the $100 price range, mm-hmm. and there are probably dozens out there at this point. Is there one that you like? Um, the Gen 1? Um, yeah, I'd go, probably go with the Hirachi Control. So... Um, this one. So this is not the one we've been talking about right, for the last several weeks. 11624 is the brand name, and the Hirachi Control X is, is confusing. Is the one you've been playing with and you're loving. Yeah. It's a thermoformed. It has the fiberglass, carbon fiber mix in the layup. This is not that. This is a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddle. Uh, with the curved top, it is elongated. It has a longer handle, so you're able to get a little bit more whip through uh, leverage with this a little bit more power, but very much a control paddle, similar to way the way all of the raw carbon fiber p- paddles played with 
a few years ago, and this one is cheap, cheap. It's 80 bucks before code. You can probably find a 10% off code. In fact, I have one. <laughs> John Q. What would that code be, John? <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. So you get it down to 72 bucks, which is a steal for. So for that's, that. that's one there, the 11624 Harache. That's right. Do you have, do you have a Gen 1? Battle, you might mention. You know what? Uh, my brother had asked me this question. He was looking for hundred dollar paddles for uh, he and his family of of four. I recommended the Vatic. So, I think overall, the Vatic Prism Flash yes. would be my top recommendation for most people. We had talked about this in our paddle breakdown a couple of weeks ago for a control paddle, and this is. This is not a – so Gen 1 we're referring to as these these um, cold-layered paddles, rock carbon fiber. This is more like a Gen 1.5 because it does have the edge foam. I think Chris Olson cut one open and this actually is thermoformed. I'm not sure. But regardless, it plays like a pillow. It's a dream for control, resets, dinks, that sort of game. Really good spin. You can see the, the ball dust on the – on the sweet spot on this paddle, you know, I've played only a few games with it. It gets really top tier spin because it's this textured raw carbon fiber surface. And yeah, just overall an exceptional paddle for a hundred bucks. Great it's, deal. Yeah. It's 99 bucks and you can take $10 off that with the code John Q. If it's not gen two, it's about as close as you can get. Yeah. So uh, that, that would be my main recommendation. Yeah. What else is on your list? People. So we've got some, some newer paddles in here I wanted to mention. I'd say really close to the top of the list oh, is, yeah. is the new Gearbox budget line. So they're G2, and they have three different shapes. And it just so happens that my favorite shape, which is this, what is it called? The quad, the I quad, believe. quad, thank you. I always forget. They, they, sometimes they change up their names, which is kind of their standard shape, uh, shorter, wider. This one I played is, with that shape for a solid year. Yeah. It's a hundred bucks for a gearbox paddle, and you know, gearbox is making some. That's a tough paddle. Quality paddles, yeah. right? It's thin, but it, it it does. I'd say that there's enough swing weight in here, enough density, uh, to to offset the thinness. It doesn't feel too poppy. It doesn't feel too light. Uh, overall, it played pretty well. I mean, it's not the hugest sweet spot. Gearbox has kind of suffered with that in their paddles. But given that it's a wider paddle, there's more forgiveness in that sweet spot. It could use a little weight, and I think there's some room uh, as far as swing weight goes sure. to add it. And it's not raw carbon fiber. It's a grit texture, but it got a really good spin in my spin test. You can look it up on my database. It's over 2,000 RPM for the spin. Caveat with that is grit textures tend to wear out a little quicker than raw carbon fiber or raw textured surfaces. So that you know may not retain its spin as long as you'd like. But for a hundred bucks, man, I would recommend this paddle to a lot of people. Agree. Uh, some other paddles to consider here. So uh, Hugh Def released released a uh, paddle called the Mage Pro, which comes in at an even hundred bucks. And again, ten percent off that with the same code. If I recall, that one's pretty well controllable. Very control oriented, plush. Yeah, very plush. You know, it is thermoformed, so uh, and so it's a Gen two raw carbon fiber paddle, and only recently have those dropped down within the hundred dollar price range. So the the benefits of the thermoforming is is a little more power, bigger sweet spot, those sorts of things. And you know, if if the beginner player or budget minded player wants something with a little bit more. Power, then go for the Gen 2 route, the thermoformed route. Mm -hmm. And this, I would say, as a thermoform paddle, is on the control side of that spectrum for thermoform paddles. So um, a good control option with a little bit more power than a Gen 1 pat paddle. I think the temptation is to go to a big box store or something like Dick's and pick out the prettiest paddle, mm -hmm. the one with the brightest colors that sort of matches your aesthetic. Yeah. And that's probably a mistake. Don't do that. <laughs> listen, listen to us instead. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, look at the database. Look at these websites. Whatever. There are many better options than what are on the shelves at Dick's or Walmart or, you know, any other brand name stores. Another option here is the Neonic Flow. <clears throat> we talked about this briefly a few weeks ago, but this paddle, again, is a— Is that 100 bucks? This one is 120, but you can get that down to, you know, to 110. Yeah, nice. 100, just, okay. just under 110 with a discount. That's a sweet deal. 
Yeah, and it's a it's a good paddle, thermoformed, uh, and normally these are 160 plus. Uh, it, it uses its own mold, so it's a unique shape to Neonic, which in and of itself is impressive because that costs a lot of money to use to create your own thermoforming mold. So if you do like this shape or you like something unique, I mean, I, I do like the, the, the color scheme on this. It's nice. Uh, raw carbon fiber, really good spin. Again, you can see the ball dust on here. And this one is more powerful, I'd say, a more powerful option than, than the Mage. But still pretty plush. Still pretty plush. Yeah, I don't love the shape, but I love the way it plays. And my last one here I'm going to mention is uh, the Speed Up Ice. And this is $120. Good so God. What is that, an 8-inch handle? <laughs> it's a long handle. <laughs> so you can get it down to $108 with, with my code, bring it down to close to, to um, 100 bucks. But, yeah, this one, this one, the special thing about this one is not only the length of the handle. So if, if you, first of all, if you're coming from tennis and you have a 200 backhand, yeah. You can hit two E's with this for days, right? There's no issue fitting two hands. On In all this. seriousness, that's a what a six and a half inch handle. It's I think it's marketed as six and a half, and and the overwrap goes up to seven, and the overwrap here you can still. Anyway, it's a molded handle, so this is one of the best feeling handles right, I've ever felt on. on a pickleball paddle. It. It's it's solid polyurethane. Ooh, yeah, it feels like a nice. Uh, like feels a, like a tennis racket. Yeah, like a tennis racket. Yeah, so th there's none of that exposed polymer. There's none of the ridges you get in, and sometimes even in the thermoform varieties yeah. with the carbon fiber seam. It's a, it's a really good paddle. I can get three on there. <laughs> three. three. The issue with the super long handle is is yeah, your sweet spot's going to be tiny. Yeah, you're losing real estate in the face yeah. of, the, of the paddle. So you can see that it's a square paddle, but it's narrow and and short. So you've got to be a lot more accurate. Yeah. I would not necessarily recommend that to beginners unless they have an extensive tennis background, which I think a tennis player coming to pickleball could pick that up and and play well with it right away. If you're struggling hit finding the sweet spot on. Uh, uh, normal paddles, that one's not going to be the, the choice for you no, because it takes a lot of precision to hit. That's a pretty good-looking paddle. I like that. It, it, it's a little it's, bit like that Selkirk Mach 6. Is that yeah. the name of it? That shape. Well, this one is thermoformed, and it hits a lot harder <laughs> than any oh, of the wow. other options. So if you're into the power game and you want a budget paddle and you want a long, long handle, a really good-feeling handle. Well, that's our surprise pick of the day. Yeah, it's a great choice. Nice. Yeah. Great. Good stuff. Do you have any other picks? No. Those are sister? good. Okay. Those are good. Excellent. I think we've covered everything. Once again, we're over an hour, but but I don't think we're egregiously long. We're not getting into the hour and a half mark yet, I any think. Any final thoughts? Wrap things up? No, I'm looking forward to, to next week continuing this, this paddle bracket. I think this is going to be fun. And like you said, we're going to incorporate all of the new releases unless – you know, they're total flops, but but maybe even if they are total flops. Yeah. So by the end of the bracket, we will have Yola Alpha, the carbon, the new carbon concept, and all the others we mentioned. So it'll be uh, fun to, like you said, compare the old and new. Something to tune into mm -hmm. for the next couple of weeks. It should be a lot of fun. In the meantime, $20 gift cards for everybody. Yeah. For all intents and purposes. A thousand people. <laughs> and a $100 gift card to the best comment. Awesome. Best question in the comment section. All awesome. right, thanks, Eddie. Great. Good stuff, John. Thank you. Thank you.